Case presented by Five Hour Energy. Tonight from Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Second matchup of the season between the Kentucky Wildcats and the Missouri Tigers as Mizzou looks for a regular season sweep of the Cats. And with that, we walk me courtside. Tom Hart alongside Sean Farnham. What an amazing day of college basketball, of course, overshadowed by the FBI reports. And as that pertains to Kentucky, we'll go a little bit deeper late in the game. But specifically, Kevin Knox was named in the report. Kentucky looked into everything. They haven't found any eligibility issues pertaining to him, which is great news because this is a team with Kevin Knox that has found its stride. Well, and he's really playing some of the best basketball. I'll go back to that game on Tuesday night. I was there in Fayetteville. I was really impressed with Kevin, not just with the 23 points offensively but his defense in the second half on Jalen Barford was completely disrupted to the all-conference caliber player meanwhile an all-conference all-american caliber player from Missouri Michael Porter jr. one of the top prospects in the game was cleared for basketball activities on Thursday he has been practicing with Mizzou he was on the floor for their shoot around today but he is not expected to see action tonight and is not dressed out. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Audible. Cullen Van Leer was a key defensive matchup for Missouri in their earlier season win against Kentucky. He was able to shut down Kevin Knox. John Calipari starting five has been shuffled a little bit. He'll bring two guys off the bench to play starters minutes including point guard Quade Green. Missouri in the row black Kentucky in the home white and the Tigers control the tip with Cassius Robertson running the point Yeah, the lineup that impresses me most for Kentucky right now is when you go with the two guards Quad a Shea and then you bring in Washington and Vanderbilt along with Kevin Knox That's the five that I think has been the most productive great defense for Kentucky on the opening possession They force a turnover and Gilgis Alexander failed a uh, foul for me in the open floor A key for Missouri will be keeping Cassius Robertson on the floor. He plays 36 minutes a game, and he commits his first personal foul. Great job defensively. First possession. Good trap in the corner, and then your rotations from the help side. Mentioned Kevin Knox's struggles in the earlier game with Missouri. He finished with just five points and three boards in 25 minutes of action. He missed both of the threes that he attempted. He will have number 33 in black. Cullen Van Leer glued to his hip, and Van Leer gets a fingertip on the first pass. Here's Shea Gilgis Alexander going to work. Now Wenyan Gabriel in the paint. And he walked with it. Both teams have turned it over on their opening possession. Kentucky will show a little bit of pressure to expect John Calipari's team to pick Missouri up full court a lot tonight? Yeah, I do, and, and I think Coach Martin did as well. We talked about it at shooting around with him. He said, I, I want them to extend out their pressure against us. And he kind of made a joke when I said, we're good for 15 turnovers every game <laughs> anyway. That's right. That's right. And Missouri is good for that. And yet they're still in a majority of the games that they've played this season. Here's Kevin Perrier inside, and he has it rejected by Wenyan Gabriel. John Calipari didn't think he had a defensive team. He said, we're going to win games based on our offense. That will be our focus. And it has carried them to a two-game winning streak after a four-game losing streak. And an offensive foul on Kevin Knox. And Coach Cal, you can see, not pleased with that call. His ninth season here at Kentucky. But remember the first meeting between these two teams. They did a great job of getting Kevin Knox to drive off that three-point line, rotate over, and be ready to take the charge. I talked to Kevin Knox about that today after Kentucky shoot-around. He said they will play me physical, they will be in me and push me around, and they will always have somebody waiting to take a charge. So it's certainly something that he expected. Here's Jordan Barnett. Shot clock at nine. Cassius Robertson, the leading scorer, gives it up. Barnett spot up three, and he drills it. When his feet are set and he's on the wing area, it's almost automatic. You've got to be there on the catch with zero space. That was an area of focus for Kentucky at the shoot around today. Wenyan Gabriel back rims a three. The focus for Kentucky defensively is to make Cassius Robertson and Jordan Barnett put it on the floor going to their left. Well, it's a problem for this entire Missouri roster is 
putting it on the floor and gritty. That's where Michael Porter will come in and help. Shot clock is at eight. Van Leer for three. He's not on the floor for his offense right now. He's out there to play great defense on Kevin Knox. Sean Hamadou Diallo has been struggling lately for John Calipari. That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> I mean, look, he's shooting 8% the last seven games from three. Eight. Um, and and it's, it starts to get in your head a little bit. You know, and I think that when you talk about Hami, he's out in the open floor, his explosiveness, his athleticism, his aggressiveness in attacking. And Coach Cal has been really clear about this. He says, look, I want him to shoot free throw line jump shots. Yeah. Um, but yet, he sometimes allows his offense to dictate also what he does at the defensive end of the floor. And he should be an elite level defender. With his athleticism, quickness, and length, there's nothing about him that shouldn't be spectacular. The instruction from John Calipari to Hamadou Diallo the last couple of days of practice has been to make easy plays and be athletic. Don't try to make it too hard. B.J. Washington draws a foul inside. Jonte Porter had just entered, and he commits his first. Well, and the other aspect of that is what? If you're talking about staying on Hamid, Hamid Diallo, by the way, is that make the simple play. What does that mean? That means sometimes right now he's not. He's driving and there's people standing in front of him and he's extending out and pushing off with his arm. Instead of stopping, stepping back and hitting a five to eight foot jump shot, he's going into the contact and then getting offensive fouls. Saw that on Tuesday night against Arkansas. P.J. Washington knocks down the first of two. He's come on big. Off the bench the last three games, and he scored 42 points in that span. Double figures in three straight. Well, I'll tell you, the bench was huge against Arkansas. Outscored the Hogs 38 to 6 on the road. And P.J. Washington, Jared Vanderbilt, Quad A. Green. As they came into the game, it changed. Everything changed. It was an 11-0 start for the Razorbacks, and then the water got turned off. Yeah. And they had given up offensive rebounds in that start. They're down 15 to 5 before Quade Green hit a three to spark the comeback. Shot clock at six. Missouri bleeding it again, nearly turning it over. Geist has to hurry. He'll throw up a contested three, sidewinds it to hit the rim, and Jonte Porter is there on the glass. Tillman the follow slam. Just a really poor job on the interior blocking out that time. Defensively, you force them to take a contested, off-balance, really prayer shot with the shot clock winding down. And you watch the ball instead of initiating contact and creating space to then go get the rebound. Diallo will throw up a three. Got it! That might just break the dam for Hamadou Diallo. That's a big shot for him to see the ball go down through the rim. You know, sometimes as a scorer, you just need to see the shot go in. He's never going to be a great shooter, at least not yet in his career. But he's a capable three-point shooter. I watched him extensively at practice yesterday. He did not see very many jumpers go down at all, and this was unguarded in practice. Shot clock at two. Barnett. Missouri's offense off kilter thanks to sensational Kentucky defense early. Kevin Knox in the paint. And Jonte Porter the board. The big fella bringing it all the way up. He actually dribbled in too deep because he took away the space for Tillman. Jeremiah Tillman sends P.J. Washington scrambling. It's a second foul on Missouri's big. We're tied at five. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. And in part by Buell, proud partner of the NCAA. Welcome back to Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Tom Hart alongside Sean Farnham. Five apiece here early on. What a fantastic day of college basketball, but the last well, 48 hours or so have been a nightmare. FBI College Basketball Pro continues according to ESPN and Yahoo Sports reports, including a report from our own Mark Schleyball. said Arizona coach Sean Miller talks payment for DeAndre Ayton on the wiretap. Sean Miller will not coach tonight for Arizona against Oregon. Ayton is scheduled to play last we knew. A lot of players identified in the documents, including Markel Fultz, the number one overall pick coming out of Washington. 
Reports said that agents allegedly gave cash advances and expenses to players and families. Kentucky was mentioned in the report. The only active player was Kevin Knox, and the release from Kentucky today said that they have cleared Kevin Knox, no eligibility issues or rules violations for any current student athletes or staff related to Friday's report. How do you, do you Sean Farnham, digest all of this news? Well, it's just one small, very small sample size of an agent and an AAU coach and runner for an agent overstepping its boundaries, exploiting relationships, uh, and players' families who, who don't know the rules, uh, allowing these bad loans. As we, if you read the report, there's a lot of bad loans. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the business of giving out bad loans, that's bad for your business. <laughs> yes, okay. I but I, what I would say is this, Tom. Outside of Sean Miller, everybody else's name that's initialed in the report, as of today, and as of what we know as I speak, there's no link or tie to any university or coach. So this is a layer. There will be more layers to this FBI investigation. This isn't going away. We still haven't gotten to Adidas or any other shoe companies. We haven't gotten to the assistant coaches yet or any of the people that have called the hotline. So for me, look, this is newsy. There's a lot to digest here. Are there problems with the game? Yes. Part of the problems with the game, though, are connected also with the NBA. And the NBA's rules of taking away 18-year-olds' rights to go play in the NBA and implementing the one-and-done rule, which is not a college rule, has created a culture where this can really grow. Kevin Knox drills his first three. Kentucky has doubled up on Mizzou, now 10-5. to five. You use the phrase newsy, but if you have been in any college basketball arena or practice gym over the last 48 hours, it is all anyone is talking about. Coaches, assistant coaches, administrators, there is real concern with a lot of people. Offensive foul on Missouri. Talking with John Calipari about it over the last couple of days, he said, listen, I firmly believe that if any coach used an agent or is using agents to try and get players to their program, they shouldn't be in this business. They're in the wrong business. However, if agents are getting to players in eighth, ninth grade as teenagers, as high schoolers, without any connections to schools or any regard to recruiting, that's not a school problem or a coach problem. That's an agent problem. Right. And there's ways to circumvent that. You can, you can ban an agent from being able to be an agent if this information comes out, right? The other thing is this, I go back to the NBA. The NBA came up with this idea for one and dones, right? Because yes. they thought it was bad for the league that there were guys that were coming in the league without playing the power. By the way, since we talked about this, Kentucky's played out of their mind. It's an 11-0 run. John Calipari saying, guys, keep talking about it. We're playing our best basketball of the season. But the one and done, they say, well, you know, it was bad because there were kids that were, were not being successful in the league. There's guys that spend four years in college and don't become successful in the NBA. You're either going to make it or you're not, and the margin is very thin. Cassius Robertson with the answer for Missouri, five-point game now. And there's outliers to everything, right? But to say that it doesn't work when LeBron, Kobe, KG, I'm just going to keep talking. Kentucky fans will be like, you know what, Sean, we don't even care that you're talking this much. We're crushing it right now. A non-three-point <laughs> shooting team is just bombs away in Rupp Arena. They've hit four of five. And they are sharing the wealth on the offensive end. I think the partnership needs to come with the NBA and the NCAA, though. It will have to be collectively bargained. Yeah. They're going to count the shot for Jordan Barnett and a foul on the rebound. How See, about Kentucky getting hot? Well, I stopped talking about what's going on, and then Missouri gets a shot. But how about the dribble penetration, the kick out, good quick ball reversal, Quade Green's feet set, ready to knock it down, and then Shea Gilders Alexander. You go under the screen, that creates that gap in space, and Kentucky knocks down three straight from beyond the arc. Gilgis Alexander will take a seat. Really good start. We had both ends of the floor for Kentucky. And everybody keeps asking this question, Tom. Have they turned the corner? Do you believe in them? I need a larger sample size, but from what I saw on Tuesday night to what you see tonight, there are steps that are moving forward here. Whoa, that's what Cassius Robertson can do. He hits another challenge three. He's got six. 
And it's a one possession game suddenly. The only sample size that really matters for Kentucky and their fans will be March. Yep. And John Calipari has had teams do this before. Young teams, they caught fire late. They went on deep runs, including just a few years ago when they scuffled towards the end of the conference season and then went all the way to the national title game. Run out for Kentucky. Cassius Robertson steals it away on the bounce pass. As great as Kentucky has played defensively, Missouri is right there, down three. Pull up jumper. Reed Nico finds his first rebound. John Keller Perry told his guys today that in order to have success in the postseason, we've got to be a team that can score. We've got to score 75 points a game. 61 isn't going to cut it because you're going to play teams in the postseason that are good enough to put points on the board. Cassius Robertson. Oh. Did he kiss that one in? He has been amazing. He has hit three threes. Missouri on an eight nothing run. Well, he's a conference player of the year caliber player. Transfer from Canisius played in Rupp Arena last year with Canisius. He said, I love playing in this building. It what it's what proved to him that he could play at this level. We've got a foul on the floor. Speaking of players who can play in this level, Michael Porter Jr is a superstar in the making. Will we see him? And Sean Farnham's going to present a case of why he could be good or bad for this Missouri team. Missouri and Kentucky are tied at 16. Missouri still playing without Michael Porter Jr., who only played in one game this season. That was November 10th against Iowa State. What does he bring to the table? Well, Tom, look, you're talking about the number two overall recruit. And the only guy to win the Naismith and Gatorade National Player of the Year awards besides Dwight Howard, Alonzo Mourning, Chris Weber, and LeBron James. There's some advantages and some adjustments that have to take place. One of the advantages are the ability to score, a go-to guy that you can count on, that can create a shot or facilitate a shot for a teammate. He's got elite level athleticism and a superb shooter anywhere out on the floor. The adjustment would have to be this, and I played with Baron Davis his freshman year. We had guys that won national championships. Look at the lack of movement offensively. The only player that's moving is Michael Porter. Then when he catches the ball, everybody's watching. This was against the exhibition against Kansas, the really only footage that we have for him. Defensively, there's also a liability. Not because he can't play defense, but is he going to be bought in to the toughness that Conzo Martin requires out of his team? He's been out since November because of a micro disectomy. There's L3 and L4 spinal discs on November 21st, the sixth McDonald's All-American in MU history. Consider that. In terms of impacting a program, Kentucky gets six McDonald's All-Americans a year. He's only the sixth in Mizzou history. But are you suggesting that, that to an extent Michael Porter could hurt Missouri if he comes back on the floor? No. You want him on the floor 100%. I just think that there's there's also an adjustment because their offense and the way they've run their offense now is different than when they were working with Michael in October. And I went to multiple practices with Michael being there. You clearly want Michael Porter on the floor if you're Missouri. But the offense looks different now because without Michael, this team had to share the ball, pass the ball, and space and cut a lot more than what can happen. Baron Davis at times, it's not because of selfishness or anything else. Baron Davis would catch the ball, and we'd look at him and go, okay, do, do your Baron Davis thing. Yeah. And I think that's something you've got to be concerned about if you're Missouri, is you don't want to disrupt the flow of the offense and say, okay, go do your Michael Porter thing. You played with Baron Davis at UCLA is where that story comes from, but I will say this, Missouri's weakness this season, weaknesses are in turnovers, yep. not having enough ball handlers on the floor or guys that aren't good enough to handle the ball, and late game situations. They have lost game after game. Ole Miss, Florida, Illinois, and that's a guy that wants the ball at the end of the game. And that would fix all of those problems, by the way. 
and, and no offense to Jordan Geis, but in that Florida game, Michael Porter would have his hands on the ball, not Jordan Geis. Wenyon Gabriel left it short. P.J. Washington, and it's knocked out of bounds. Michael Porter, it'll be Missouri basketball, was out there pregame with Missouri today. Thought maybe he would actually dress out for this game. Conzo Martin said he is going to come back. I believe he's going to play this year. He's, you know, Conzo told us he was so surprised, almost shocked even, how quickly he's been able to reacclimate himself to the game. Well, he said just the physical endurance factor and the aggressiveness in which he approached practice the other day on Friday stood out to him most. You know, that he said he likened it to himself when he had injuries in his career. He said, look, I dealt with knee injuries and I'd come back and you're kind of you're kind of feeling it out a little bit. There was no feeling it out for Michael. He just jumped right back in. He's an elite athlete, but he was an elite athlete that today during shoot around was relegated to the scout team. He wore Kevin Knox's number and he was Kevin Knox in the scout team. And I said it's the first time we've been in a shoot around where the player on the scout team might actually be as talented and if not more talented than the player in which they represent. Nico gets it away and they're going to take a look at it. They can review it in a shot clock situation to see if he got it off on time if the ball went through the hoop. And so Anthony Jordan will look at it. I talked, I told Kevin Knox that today at Kentucky Shooter. I said, you know, Michael Porter play, played you today in the scout team. And uh, he was very businesslike with his answer. He goes, you know, it makes sense. We're similar players. We both like to shoot the three. We both like to work on the perimeter. Kevin Knox actually took an official visit to Missouri. See if it left Reed Nico's hand. That's really close. It was ruled good on the floor. Yeah, that's good. Good. Good, good. All right, let's play. So Kevin Knox was recruited by Missouri, took an official visit, and I asked him about that today. He said, how close were you to actually going to Mizzou? He said, well, I was coming to Kentucky all along, but I had one more official visit to take, and I wanted to hang out with Michael and his boys. So why not go to Columbia, meet the staff, spend some time with them? They're friends. You know, they were trying to negotiate that up at the Nike Hoop Summit last year where I got to see them all. And they were actually teammates up there for the entire week. Coming up next, more drama. It's a Pac-12 matchup between number 14 Arizona without their coach and Oregon. You can always watch it on the ESPN app if you're out and about. I'm sure there'll be more news coming out of that Arizona program as time moves along. Again, DeAndre Ayton will go tonight. Why? It makes no sense. I'm sorry, if, you're, if the coach isn't there because of something that allegedly happened and has reportedly been wiretapped and figured out, uh, I don't know how the player can go out there because we've seen it too often. Chris Patola did a great job in studio, I thought, saying, look, look at what happened at SC this year with Anthony Melton. Uh, look at what happened at Kansas this year. There's numerous other examples of players being held out until eligibility has been cleared. And when it comes into question, maybe they're just kind of at Arizona, like, whatever, the season is what it is, let's go. Jordan Barnett for three. Missouri back in front. Barnett has hit two triples. He has eight. It's Missouri by three. I will say this, there's only been one game that DeAndre Ayton hasn't played in this season. They've played 28 games. So if he's ruled ineligible, they have to forfeit their wins. They would go into tonight's game 1-27. and 27. They're not making the tournament at 1-27. and 27. The answer right back for Kentucky. Now, Lorenzo Romar will be coaching the game tonight for Arizona. Looking to lead a team to a Pac-12 championship for the third time in his coaching career. Nobody picks up Jordan Geis, and then he's fouled late. And Geis will be at the free throw line. This Missouri team can stroke it second in the league in three-point shooting. Well, a good job, again, catching P.J. Washington, leaning into the screen, so you reject the screen, and then Missouri's been slow to their closeouts, and Shea Gilgis-Alexander was ready to shoot. So Jordan Geis to the free throw line. John Calipari instructed his team today to let Jordan Geis drive, to play under him on screens, but they're not really worried about him getting into the paint because of their length. Geist stands 6-2, and that might be stretching it a little bit. Well, I, I'd almost want him to come into the paint. He's turnover prone. With your length, if you get him trapped in deep with multiple arms around him, you're going to get deflections and an opportunity for a steal and then a run out against Missouri. Missouri's lost against Ole Miss on Tuesday. Jordan Geist had four assists and six turnovers.
Mm. That one was halfway down for Gilgis Alexander. Missouri is shooting 45% from three in this game. Over the last five games, 44% of their attempts have come from behind the arc. Geis ignores the double screen, takes it in, and banks it in. Now, if you don't have anybody to stop him up that line, though, he's good enough where he's going to be able to finish. So you've either got to pinch off the shooter on the outside, which is difficult because Mizzou can shoot the ball, or you've got to rotate over on your back end a lot quicker. What a lob and a finish by Jared Vanderbilt. Jonte Porter goes into traffic. Purrier tries to spin it up. And Diallo saves it for Kentucky. Wade Green, transition three. Yes, sir! Kentucky has hit six threes. They have a two-point lead. Well, John Calipari was frustrated with his team's defensive effort. He said, let's just focus on offense. Maybe the defense will come along. The offense certainly has. Well, set the screen. Defense reacts. Jared Vanderbilt, he's accepted his role, his identity. He's been sensational as of late. And then again, you look at the shooting numbers right now. Six of eight from deep as Quade knocks it down, says he's got ice in the veins. I see you, Quade Green. <laughs> All right, but the big reason for that, Tom, is that they have assisted on six of their eight made field goals. Those were two of the assists. They're sharing the basketball. They're moving. They're not staying, becoming stagnant in the half-court set. When you have this kind of athleticism and length, cut, space, move, and then finish. And if you give the ball up, it's amazing what happens. You give it the ball up to an open teammate, it becomes infectious, and the quality of shot for others improves. Missouri has turned it over three times tonight, so Kentucky is showing a little bit of pressure. I asked Cal if they're going to press a little bit more tonight. Here's Jonte Porter for three. They pressed Missouri early on in the last matchup, but then went away from it. Geis has it. He said, what I learned my time at UMass is that you don't have to press the whole time to get a pressing identity. He said, we've run out, we press for the first two, three minutes, then take it off. And then the second half, we do the same thing. We press the first two minutes, and everybody would say, look at this, they're a pressing team. Jonte Porter backing his way in, draws a foul on Diallo. It was a monster mismatch no matter how you cut it. Jonte Porter 6'11", Diallo 6'5". As he watch this, yeah, I've seen that called an offensive foul a lot more than I've seen it called a defensive foul this year, Tom. You can understand why Coach Cal crossed his arms and just stared. Doesn't explain why you're crossing your arms and staring at me right now. Dante Porter, and Missouri stagnant on the offensive end. Did I make a call you didn't like? Yeah, maybe once or twice already. <laughs> you know, I have the power to tee you up? Yes. Here's Diallo working on Nico. Sarah got their hands on it, couldn't squeeze it. Green shakes Porter, then throws it away. It's our final big Monday before Champ Week. We'll have number five, Duke, taking on Virginia Tech and Blacksburg at 7 Eastern. Then number eight, Kansas, plays host to Texas at Allen Fieldhouse. Jayhawks have clinched a share of their 14th consecutive conference title with a win today in Lubbock. By the way, both games are on ESPN and the ESPN app. Congratulations to the Kansas 12 uh, championship. I don't call it the Big 12 anymore. It's just the Kansas 12. <laughs> I mean, let me ask you a question. Can you be a great league? No. If you've had the same team win a no. conference title 14 straight years? I'm, I'm sorry, you can't. I mean, Kansas is a great program, and that doesn't diminish anything. And the Big 12 has had some really great years. That ball just hung on the window. But, I mean, it's more West Coast That's Conference in that regard, right? Yes. I mean, look, people think and go to the SEC and go, man, it's, it's so Kentucky-dominated. 
Have you looked at the who's won the conference championships in this league? Remember Florida went undefeated a couple years ago at 18 and 0. I mean, there's been other teams that have stepped up and challenged, and this year in particular, you have Kansas on the rope, and you let them off the hook. Reed Nico with the foul. Kevin Perrier with the shooting touch a moment ago for Mizzou. It's like the old song. I and mean, just like, hold up, wait, <laughs> boom, there you go. Let's <laughs> see what the next episode is, is P.J. Washington gets to the free throw line. I knew you'd pick that up. Eight, team foul on Missouri, Kentucky you're, in the bonus. You're good with the lifestyle and hip-hop thing. Mm -hmm. That's my middle name. Washington has three. Coming off of a double-double against Arkansas, 13 and 10. It was just his second double-double of the year. His first came against Vermont. That win looks more impressive by the day, by the way. It's 17 and 10 against the Catamounts. P.J. Washington goes two for two. Kentucky back up by two. Kevin Perrier open from the corner. Did they lose a defensive player on that possession? I mean, there was nobody around him, Todd. Dribble handoff action is designed for you to not communicate defensively and then lose somebody. That's exactly what happened that previous possession. They got away with it, but they've got to be aware of that next time Missouri goes to that action. Here's Quade Green. Drops in a jumper. He's got eight. I, I love the way he's played. I loved it on Tuesday. I, I love it again here tonight. Everything is compact and tight. Not tight where, you know, you're stressing or pressuring, but everything is close to his body. Everything is just in a good rhythm right now for Quade Green. And he takes it away from Jordan Geist. Kicked out of bounds by Mizzou. Missouri turns it over for the fourth time tonight. They average 14 turnovers a game. And as Conzo Martin talked about it, kind of joking with us, hey, we're good for our 14 no matter what. The real concern is Missouri's inability to take care of the ball in late game situations, in key situations. I guess you could argue that every possession matters, right? Especially if it's one possession games. Gabriel. Comes the first non-sophomore to score a point for Kentucky tonight. Cats lead by seven. First non-freshman, pardon me, and we got a foul on Kentucky. 33-26, Cats rolling here tonight at Rub. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Goodyear. Those who live up to their names make one for themselves. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. Halftime report, Tom. All right, Kevin, thanks. Here are the conference titles that have been on the line today. Kansas clinched at least a share with their win in Lubbock. Virginia held Pittsburgh, Sean, to seven points in the first half. Seven. They win the outright ACC regular season title. At least Pitt made their extra point. And Auburn's trailing Florida, but Bruce Pearl's team has a chance to make history tonight. It's, you know, Florida, Florida is one of those teams that is like the SEC, right? You, anyone can beat anyone, and I know that's an easy statement to say this year, but it has been so chaotic because the quality of depth inside the SEC. Florida's at, at night, at some nights they look like they're great. The other night at Tennessee, Tom, they were just so stagnant, so disengaged against the Volunteers. I thought early on that Chris Chioza was going to be the player of the year in the league, but now it's tough to figure out who might earn that honor or deserve it. I think Yante Mayton, even though Georgia has struggled a little bit, uh, they got a win today against LSU at home. Uh, and I just think when you look at the numbers, Yante Mayton has been the guy. P.J. Washington back to the free throw line. Mayton still among league leaders in points and rebounds in the SEC when you consider the tempo at which Georgia plays 
and their point totals, he has a higher percentage of his team's points than anyone else in the league by a wide margin. And he's the key every single night, right? When you're talking about player of the year, you're not talking about best player on the best team. You're talking about the player that's most deserving of it. And Yante Mayton is the guy that on every scouting report when they go in, the first, the second, and the third guy they talked about is Yante Mayton. Well, Missouri gives up an offensive rebound on the free throw and ends up being a foul on Kevin Purrier. It's his second. Now Missouri has three starters with two fouls each, Robertson, Tillman, and Purrier. And Geist, who plays starters minute, minutes, also has two. Well, I just love what Jared Vanderbilt has done. He just outworked and willed himself to that rebound and then earns the trip to the free throw line. He's got seven rebounds in this one. Our ABC Sunday Showcase game this week, presented by the United States Marine Corps, has the Spurs in the land to battle LeBron and the Cavs. NBA Countdown tips off our coverage with Chris Bosch joining the crew in studio. 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. Now about the news from the Spurs, Kawhi Leonard was likely done for the season. Think about seven rebounds in about 10 minutes worth of play right now for Kentucky. He is fantastically efficient. Wildcats by six. A danger zone for Missouri. Well, he's just bought into his role. He just is like, hey, you know what? I'm going to rebound more than anybody else. And he's manufactured offense off it. Look at that. Wow! P.J. Washington skies for the jam. Saw that one coming from a mile away. What a read. What a pass. Cassius Robertson fouled on the three. This is where Kentucky's at its best, in transition. Throw the ball up, let your athlete get up and finish. Shea Gilgis Alexander, a perfect pass. And P.J. Washington with the explosive finish. So Cassius Robertson will have three free throws coming his way. Sixth in the league in scoring. Sean, look at Cassius Robertson's shoes. He's worn the same shoes for every game this year. He has worn them for most of the practices. He has blown these Nikes out. I asked him about it before the game. He said, they're my favorite shoes. They stopped making this model. They're last year's Kobe's, I believe, right? Yep. Last year's Kobe's, so we can't get any more in right now, so I'm just going to keep wearing them. That's not healthy. That's not good. I mean, seriously, it's a bad look. <laughs> Wait, you're scoring 16 and a half points a game. He can wear whatever he wants. He could be out there in house slippers if he wants. If Nike made him. Put By the a way, swoosh on house slippers. He's almost in house slippers right now. I mean, those things are, the swoosh is literally falling off the side of the shoe. Yeah, and before long, we're going to see his little piggy. They're just going to bust out the side, right? Well, you can turn an ankle really easy, and they, they need to figure out a way to get him some new shoes. There's plenty of options available. He's got a... Team high, 11. He will be in the running for player of the year in the SEC. Quade Green, coast to coast. And the decision there was, do I give up the alley-oop dunk to Diallo, or do I try to fake and jab and back off and maybe Quade pulls up early? Or how can I keep myself from committing my third foul in the first half? Well, he just backed up and went into Diallo's lane, and then Quade just took it right down the middle. It's probably the shoes ball. Okay, Mars Blackman. Porter. Bounce it off the back of Nico. There you go. Diallo Jam! What a finish to this half are we seeing by these Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky is on an 8-2 run. They've made seven of their last eight. They've gotten some high percentage looks. Now just open floor in transition. This is where his athleticism can really shine. Confidence coming for number three. It's been a rough stretch at the offensive end, but finally some smiles.
Jordan Geis back to the free throw line for Missouri. And, and as Robertson goes and sits down, and we talked about his shoes, I think it's only fair to talk about it's actually finally PK-80. It's Phil Knight's birthday. Oh, finally! So you think for what like... What were you doing in November? We were just having an early party. So if you, if you think about it, he, he could have got a nice pair of Nikes and just put it on for Phil. <laughs> Wenyon Gabriel into Nico. Offensive foul. Meanwhile, a big one next Saturday as the SEC closes its regular season. Sonic Blockbuster, by the way, in the ACC, North Carolina and Duke. 8-15 next Saturday, the second version of that one. Both teams have been playing fantastic basketball since they last met. Neither team has lost. Mike Krzyzewski has turned to the zone to get his team to play some defense. Catches Robertson off the screen. Loose ball. Robertson gets it and gets a foul on Diallo. One thing I'll say is that Miz see Robertson react to getting hit in the head. Is Missouri's trying to manufacture some points here by getting to the free throw line late in the first half. But their offense has been really st stagnant. It's been a lot too much one on one here in the first half. Loose ball, scramble situation. I think he got poked in the eye yeah, get by Wendy and Gabriel. Right. And in Burton. But Tom, when you have only two assists going into halftime on 11 made field goals, that tells you that Missouri's having to work really hard for their shots. Cassius Robertson, typically a dead eye shooter, might be working with one right now. And goes one of two from the line. A guy's. Made 82% of his free throws this season. Five second difference in the shot clock and game clock, and Kentucky will use a timeout to set something up. It's a nine point lead for the Cats at home. John Calipari looking for his 24th consecutive 20 win season. Dean Smith holds the record with 27. Kentucky 19 and 9, and just a tick above 500. In conference played eight and seven. Same record as Missouri. There is a log jam in the middle of the SEC. A lot still to be decided when it comes to seeding for the SEC tournament coming up in St. Louis. So five second difference. Kentucky will try to work the clock as Missouri shows zone. Jonte Porter jumps out to make a play. And I'm the only one that could do it. Go figure, Sean Farnham leaves our broadcast position and the ball comes right to us. Tom, you've always wanted to be the star of the show. Here's Diallo. He's been the star tonight for the Cats. I told you after you saw that first one go through that you just got a sense that Diallo would gain some confidence. Geis had to double clutch, puts up an air ball. Kentucky does it with offense and some bumping between Diallo and Geis. Fantastic first half for Kentucky all the way around. They shoot 56% from the floor. And the Cats suddenly look like a shooting team. They hit eight threes. Let's take it to Sean and Coach Cal. Coach, your thoughts on the first half? Love our effort. Love our effort. I mean, you know, we got guys in foul trouble, but we, we sustain. And uh, it's nice, like Kevin Knox gets two on a push. Why'd you do that? You can't play now, but someone else stepped up. Happy for Hami. Hami's been struggling. He needed something good to happen. Coach, what do you look to do here in the second half to continue it? Your outside shooting has been great. You guys have lived on the two points. Well, I'm trying to get them to drive more, but this team is crowding that lane. So you know what? You're going to have to take some of those. All right, Coach. Thanks so much. Tom? All right, Sean. Thanks. Great hustle. Our score here at the half. Kentucky leads Missouri 44-32. Largest lead of the game for the Cats. Great offensive effort by Kentucky in this first half. Let's take you back to the studio. Here's Kevin Connors. Welcome back to Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. And back inside Rupp Arena in Lexington. This is the SEC on ESPN. 
Kentucky finished the half on a tear. They made 10 of their last 12 field goals, and they have a 12-point lead against Missouri at the half. Welcome back courtside. Tom Hart alongside Sean Farnham. Certainly seemed like Kentucky was hitting their stride coming into this game, and after the half, I think they're there. You improved my pocket square from the first half. You changed it. I don't know if you noticed, but here's what I did notice. Kentucky, they're not a three-point shooting team. They go 8 of 10 in the first half from beyond the arc. And it was the balance of this freshman group that stood out more than anything. Tommy had a great first half. Shea Gilgis Alexander, he's got eight. Quade with 10. P.J. Washington with seven. They shared the basketball. They made their teammates better. Nine assists on 14 made field goals. Robertson and Barnett did what they had to do. The rest of the team didn't quite hold up their end for Missouri here in the first half. They also only had two assists on 11 makes. Tom, they've got to move the ball. They've got to get better movement off ball, and they've got to get ball reversal action to force Kentucky's defense to collapse and extend back out to shooters to open up the offense. It was an 11 to three run over the last three minutes and 21 seconds for Kentucky to take control. Here's Kevin Perrier. He gets triple team, throws it away. Kevin Knox, buckle up. Feel like it could have been a lot fancier, Sean. Easy like a Sunday morning. Of course, that's tomorrow. Did you catch that right? Yes, I did. Okay. Per year. They go back inside to him. Follows his own miss and is able to bank it in. And good strength and good wherewithal to get that follow-up, but he should have made the first one. Yeah, but then he can't pad his stats and add an offensive rebounds. Tom, it's not about that. It's about trying to win a basketball game on the road right now. And Missouri's got to be more efficient in how they are playing. P.J. Washington gets into the paint. Power dribble and bucket. I get the feeling that reports of Kentucky's demise were greatly exaggerated. That four game losing streak seems like eons ago per year with another bucket in the paint. Especially this college basketball season. Look, there's no doubt this isn't the Kentucky team of, you know, everybody thinking national championship right away. I don't think anybody's still thinking national title, but it, it's about getting better and you mentioned it. he's done this twice before with a team that struggled once was in I believe 2011 mm -hmm. and then the other one was 2014 and lose six games in conference play and then find themselves and had stretches in both those runs where they they, they struggled a little bit Tillman loses it Missouri has turned it over for the seventh time but what you've seen so far tonight is better trust and better belief. And for any team to be a championship caliber basketball team, trust is one of the biggest words you have to have. Communication, belief in each other. And how do you demonstrate that on the court? Being there in help side position defensively, sharing the basketball and loving the joy of getting an assist. Fixing your partner's pocket square. Jay Gilgis Alexander gets another bucket. He's into double figures. You mentioned the 2011 team. They were led by Brandon Knight. Final four run after the mass exodus and all that talent the year before. And the 2014 team was coming off the NIT season. Unranked at the start of the NCAA tournament. Made it to the national title game. Cassius Robertson. Jeremiah Tillman jams it home. He is so strong. And to me, for them to have success here in the second half, he needs to play a lot of minutes. He was limited just five minutes in the first half due to early foul trouble, and that has been something that has plagued him throughout the season for Missouri. It started in the exhibition games. Kevin Knox uses every bit of the rim. He's got nine. Tillman fouled out of the exhibition games against both Kansas and Wisconsin, even when they were allowed seven personal fouls each. Out to Barnett, spot up jumper. And a foul underneath. If that's Tillman, it's his third. He 
It is. And see, those are the fouls he has to avoid, right, Tom? Yeah. Like, if you're Coach Martin, you, you'll take a hard defensive foul. Somebody comes in the paint, you're trying to block the shot, you're being aggressive. Fine. Getting late and being out of position for an offensive rebound and pushing somebody in the back? Not so fun. Well, in addition to that, Missouri has actually changed the way they defend the high ball screen specifically to keep Tillman out of foul trouble. There's Jared Vanderbilt. He was picking up a lot of fouls 22 feet from the basket, hedging out on screens, and finally comes to Martin and said, we just can't do that anymore. We have to have you on the floor. Cassius Robertson, impressive performance thus far. It's an impressive season for Cassius Robertson, right? I mean, it's far exceeding the normal expectations of a graduate transfer that has come from a smaller college and joined the big stage. He was second team all Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference last year with Kanisha. He wasn't even the star on his team. He was the star on this Missouri team as P.J. Washington gets another bucket. Averaging nearly 18 points a game in conference play. Kevin Knox. Rebound ends up in Washington's hands and Knox with the follow. Kevin Knox is limited minutes in the first half. John Calipari said, I had to sit him because of foul trouble. And now he's finding his rhythm here in the second half with great effort. It's a 17-point lead for Kentucky. Well, it's been a team effort. It's been a physical effort. Vanderbilt, the spin off the back, and then this is Kentucky basketball. Swarming time and time again to get that put back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, every day. What's in your wallet? Well, today they honor the 1978 national champs. Kyle Macy in the far left, the point guard of that team, Joby Hall, their head coach, the legend, is always here, and he was out there with his players. There's Coach Hall on the far right. Jack Goose Gibbons was the Final Four most outstanding player for his coach. The Lexington native went 18 of 27 in the title game. By the way, they played that game at the old Checker Dome in St. Louis. It was the home of the Blues for a long time. And they played on Indiana's floor. NCAA inspected the floor at the Checker Dome. They said, it's work, we need a new one. So instead of finding a local floor, they went out and used two semi-trailers to truck in the floor from Assembly Hall. So if you ever watch video from that championship game, you'll see that uh, unmistakable logo that you see every time you watch a game in Indiana with at midcourt with a little NCAA logo that they just threw right out there in the center circle. The tradition and the pride. And nobody left their seat at halftime when they brought them out. I mean, everybody stayed present until after they honored that 78 team. Gibbons had 41 in their 94 to 88 win against Duke. Wenyan Gabriel commits his second personal foul. I mean, he was unstoppable. He was hitting jump shots. He was getting to the rim. Duke just forgot to guard him. Jeremiah Tillman originally committed to Illinois, then backed up that commitment. Finally signed with Missouri after the coaching change in Champaign. And he goes one to two from the line, shares a hometown with Conzo Martin, both from East St. Louis. Can't wait to get to St. Louis for the conference championship tournament this year. I mean, look at what goes on already in this conference. Every game is so tight. One possession, two possession contests. You're going to see that over Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then Sunday for the championship game. Am I going to see it Wednesday? Well, you will. <laughs> I'll be having a nice yeah. dinner. <laughs> Thanks. I hope you're watching. Look at this. Yeah. Well, look at this log jam in the middle. Uh, Auburn has a chance to wrap up the title uh, with the win against Florida tonight. They're trailing last check. And, and can we can we remove the next four out from Mississippi State? 
They're nine and seven. I mean, they've got 21 wins now on the year. That would. Put, I, I, I get their non-conference schedule wasn't great. It was like the 10th worst. Right. But in the country, what they've shown in conference play and how they're playing is good enough that they're an NCAA tournament team. That would make nine teams in the tournament. It would be an SEC record. Well, SEC record is anything over six. Yeah. So we get some we get some leeway there. Haven't had a team make it from the SEC as an at-large with a losing record in conference play since Arkansas did it in the 06-07 season. Tillman commits his fourth. And that was an Arkansas team that went on a run in the conference tournament, made it all the way to the tournament championship where they lost against Florida. Tom, you're going to say losing record. There's been numerous teams in recent years, like Georgia, that won 12 games in conference play and didn't get into the NCAA tournament because the national standing of the SEC, it wasn't close to where it is now. Well, our friends at ESPN Stats and Info tagged Missouri as having a 44% chance of making the tournament coming into this game. And with a Kentucky win, that those odds would have shot through the roof. I don't know if that's going to happen as Knox matches his 13th point. This game's slipping away, and right now, it's not about Missouri at the offensive end. They're struggling down here. But they're allowing Kentucky far too easy of looks, shooting better than 61% from the floor here in the second half. Dante Porter finds an offensive rebound. Out to Cassius Robertson again. Here's Quade Green. Porter got his hands on it, then we get a foul. Jonte Porter's second. Cassius Robertson has led Missouri with 14 points tonight, and he'll go to the bench for a moment. When we talk about Michael Porter, what does his return potentially bring to the table? Tom, if you take out Cassius Robertson, you're wondering right now, where did the scoring come from out on the floor? All right, it's got to be Barnett. But Barnett's not a guy that can create his own shot. So you need scoring options, and Porter answers all those problems. Geist digs in there to create a steal. Barnett on the run out. Claude Green. Says Barnett was the last to touch it. Well, Michael Porter Jr. is from Columbia. His dad's on Conzo Martin's coaching staff. His brother, John Tay, reclassified to play with him. And they haven't been on the floor together. Played in the exhibition game against Kansas. Had a team high 21 points with eight boards. We were all there the other night for his sister senior night on the women's program, Bree. Even though she didn't play this year because of knee injuries. Quade Green and Vanderbilt will back it out. What an effort for Kentucky on the glass. Nine offensive rebounds and a career high in rebounds for Vanderbilt. Foul on the drive will step away for a timeout. Under 12 here to go at Rupp Arena, SEC tournament starting in a week or so, March 7th at the Scott Trade Center in St. Louis. All games on the SEC Network and ESPN. The champ week is right around the corner. Well, Kentucky in control. This Wildcat team is starting to find its rhythm, but throughout the SEC this year, we've had some outstanding individual performances. I don't know that one player has stood out in terms of player of the year candidates. We had the expected. We have guys charging like Grant Williams of Tennessee, Bryce Brown of Auburn, and Daryl Macon's been hot for Arkansas. And some surprises. Kanisha's transfer, Cassius Robertson would be the surprise in terms of your candidates for player of the year. Yeah, those are the guys I look at right now, and Cassius Robertson deserves all the attention in the world. You look at what he's been able to bring to the court, and then there's some things here. Favorite food is oxtail. 
Yeah. What is oxtail? It's what it sounds like. You make no, a gravy not. with it. You serve it on rice. It's a soup with beef tails. Yeah. Tail. Yeah. Then double, wants, double the gravy would really okay. help. Pick whatever spices you want. All right, and then he said superpower would be telekinesis. Mm -hmm. I don't like to move things with my mind because my mind is a dangerous place. Speaking of the SEC tournament in St. Louis, I went to the fantastic St. Louis Science Center last week. Yes. And they have a telekinesis machine. What, what we'll do is we'll sit down about 15 feet apart from each other. We'll put on the bands around our heads, and we'll see who can move the little rubber ball down the track. You want to do it? No. But sounds like it was a great father-son trip for Yeah, you. my nine-year-old son crushed me in the telekinesis game. Reed Nico with the bucket and the putback. And he has a chance for a three-point play. If Jared you had a Vanderbilt superpower, foul. what would it be? Well, considering how much traveling we do, I'd like to fly. Okay. But then you'd have your suitcase on your back. I could just fly back and forth. I could, I could I fly like in my suit. I like to teleport. See, then I don't have to worry about flying. I just, this game's over. Open up the port right here at center court, and boom, I'm back home. But that's not your superpower. That's somebody else's. That's like Bruce Wayne, who doesn't have any superpowers. He just buys all these fancy gadgets. Iron Man created his. Yeah, fair. All right. By the way, go see Black Panther. Everybody else in the world has. Yeah, they have. What an opening. I've got the soundtrack. Does that count? Somewhat. Halfway there. Kevin knocks up the curl. Here's Geist. Missouri's struggling in the second half. Just four, uh, pardon me, five of 13 from the floor. It's under 39%. Busted shoes and all. Cassius Robertson is leading the Tigers in scoring. Nico lost it, got it back, and it's off of Robertson's knees. Well, you mentioned teleportation. Here's the grand reveal. Who is it, producer Ian Gruca? Who wants to teleport? Oh, Shea Gilgis Alexander. See, I have something in common. That's a superpower. He's a smart yeah. man. I don't think it's a superpower. I think it's a toy. Like Mike is not my favorite movie. I can go with King James. I like to draw. Shay and I've got some things in common. Imagine you with picture pages right now. Kevin Knox off the side of the back. We we'll talked to him today about his game against West Virginia. He said, that was just my kind of game. He finished with 34 points. He had five threes in that one. He said, they were willing to press, pick up the tempo. It meant transition game for me, transition looks. But mostly, he said, Shea Gilgis Alexander did a fantastic job that game of looking for me, of driving and kicking. He's the type of player that needs someone to help facilitate his offensive game. That's why I think his step to the next level will be relatively smooth because it is exactly that it is more open floor and you've got point guards who can create shooting opportunities for others that doesn't mean that Kevin doesn't have to improve in certain areas he does uh, but you know there are some players that you look at the college level and you go okay well maybe not quite the player we anticipated before the start of the season but as this time goes on this year I think Kevin has made vast improvements and again, transitions well to the next level. Well, he certainly gets his shots. He's putting up double-digit shot attempts 22 times now in 29 games. He's 6 of 11 tonight. His dad is a pretty good shooter. He hit the floor today after practice. A bunch of parents are in town for these Kentucky guys. His dad played wide receiver for Bobby Bowden at Florida State. Kevin Knox Sr., and he got up some... He got up some shots, knocked him down. Mom Michelle played volleyball at Florida State as Porter commits his third. Well, Vanderbilt just absolutely dominating the boards. 13 rebounds on that lap. It was 13 rebounds in the game. The last one coming at the defensive end. I don't know how this is not a shooting foul. It was That's a lob for a dunk. Was, yeah. And that is just a poor call. Unless the foul occurred before the pass was received. Mm. 
John Calipari stomping some very expensive shoes over there. Cassius Robertson commits his fourth. Coming up next, it's a Pac-12 matchup between 14th-ranked Arizona and the Ducks of Oregon. You can always watch it on the ESPN app if you're out and about. DeAndre Ayton, we're told, is playing in that game. Even though Sean Miller will not be coaching Arizona, do you think Sean Miller will coach again? Uh, and, and here's the interesting thing, and I'll answer your question. If we really want to sell that game right, don't we just have to say it's Arizona versus Oregon, Pash, and Walton? That makes you want to stay up late on a Saturday night and watch college basketball. What do you think Bill Walton's going to have to say about the Conference of Champions? Um, I think he'll say the Conference of Champions early <laughs> and often. Let's, you, you've been around that Arizona program a lot. You've been around the Pac-12 a lot. A writer today out of Tucson used a phrase that I thought was accurate. He said, Arizona basketball is getting ready to enter a nuclear winter. How did they recover from any and all of this? Look, there, there was a point after Lute Olsen that people were wondering if the program would regain its stature at the national level on a level of consistency. And they went out and they found themselves a coach. Now, with the current headlines that Sean Miller has become part of, his days are going to be done at Arizona if all of this is true. Game day this morning, Jay Billis said he didn't expect Sean Miller to coach again, ever, that his days in college basketball are over. You take a look at the Sean Miller implications of the FBI corruption probe, reportedly captured on an FBI wiretap discussing a $100,000 payment to DeAndre Ayton. Now, Brooke Richardson, his assistant coach earlier this year, was part of the original collection of assistant coaches. So all of this is bad yeah. for Sean Miller. It's all bad for Arizona. Couple that with even what's going on right now, this is overshadowing the fact that Alonzo Trier is now ineligible for testing positive for having PEDs still in his system that evidently could have remained in his system from the original PED suspension that he went through last year and 16 games. And just trace amounts. And that's a shame. That's a whole nother conversation in terms of what's going on it's there. It's been a really bad week. Do you think Arizona plays in the NCAA tournament? Does the NCAA want to jump in here and make a statement before they get to selection Sunday? I don't know how you can get through due process in that short a time period. Largest so, lead for Kentucky, by the way. So if the answer is you can't go through due process, then they're going to play in the NCAA tournament. They're going to be eligible for the Pac-12 championship. Jordan Geis off the mark. As far as the SEC championship is concerned, an Auburn win tonight would clinch a share of the regular season title. Auburn beat Tennessee in their only meeting affects seeding in the tournament, but if they both end up tied at 13 and 5, they would be co-champions. Van Leer skips to Geis. Cullen Van Leer. Timeout on the floor. 22-point lead for Cal's Cats. Coaching can be stressful. At times, it might even be hazardous to your health. <laughs> it's about emotion. It's about bringing the group together. And as Tom mentioned, it's about the shoes. Cal's got good shoes. That's next Saturday. They're both undefeated since they last met on February 8th. Grayson Allen has been fantastic for Duke lately. He's been averaging 24 points a game over the last four. Joey Brackett has Duke as a two seed. Carolina as a three seed. Always the best. It's Grayson Allen's last home game, right? Always the best rivalry in college basketball. I mean, it's it's. The proximity of the schools is what brings it into play. The Louisville UK one is unique because it's it's out of conference, but it, it has significance for this state. The North Carolina Duke one has so much more significance to it because it often, and it has over the course of time, determined who wins the ACC championship. Is this the part where I bring up Missouri, Kansas, and remind you that James Naismith was 0-2 in his career as a Kansas coach against Missouri? No, but you just did. Mm. They played every year for 105 years, Sean. Why don't they play that again? 
Well, they did this year as an exhibition game. They sold out Sprint Center in a matter of moments. 18,000 tickets. Nick Richards with the foul. So Cassius Robertson and his ripped up shoes go back to the free throw lines. It's just sad. No, it's it's like your favorite glove. They're broken in. Those the, aren't broken in, Tom. Those are broken. Those are broken. You can see his sock <laughs> through the shoe. That's a risk for his health. If he turns he's, his ankle. He's got his ankles taped. Doesn't Nobody matter. wears high tops anymore anyway. Yeah, but there's no support on his foot. They can literally just slide right out the side of that. It's worked to the tune of 14 points tonight. I asked some of the Missouri staff, why can't Cassius Robertson get new shoes? They said, we've got plenty of shoes for him to choose from. He just doesn't like them. He likes last year's model, and it's been discontinued. Jordan Geis from the corner brought his shooting shoes. You asked yourself this question earlier in the game in the first half, so I'll ask you directly. Is Kentucky back? They're a lot closer. They're a lot closer. They're, they're a lot closer than I thought they would be, especially during that four-game losing streak. I, I wasn't very confident that this group could play with the energy, the sustained level of focus, um, and... Again, the trust and selflessness that you want to see. A lot of times this year, Tom, you'd watch Kentucky basketball, and things would look good for, for these five to six minute periods of time. And then it's five minutes of just isolation. I'm going to try to do something here, and the ball gets stuck, and it's not moving. Tonight, 15 assists on 24 made field goals. You've got five guys in double digit scoring. That's what Kentucky needs to be to be successful. So are they playing some of the best basketball I've seen them play all season long? Yes. Couple this with the Arkansas game. I ain't, and doing it in Bud Walton, by the way. Mm -hmm. That was a big win. I, I would say that these are the best back-to-back -back performances I've seen out of this Kentucky team this year. Do you know who else is back? Eric Lindsay's wife, Stephanie. Eric is the sports information director for Kentucky basketball, and John Calipari, his wife, Stephanie, Fought her way back, defeated cancer, just checked out of the Mayo Clinic yesterday. They made that 11-hour drive from Minneapolis back to Lexington. We are so happy for that wonderful couple. Now, Stephanie is such a strong woman. Um, I actually messaged her a couple of times while she was in the Mayo Clinic, and she is so strong, and Eric is... You know, he's, he's trying to basically run the media conglomerate that has to follow around Kentucky basketball, but yet was there multiple times during the course of this day, and I know he, he was talking just lit up before the game today when I said, hey, how nice is it to have your wife back home? And he said, it's great, except for she was upset. Some of the things that were supposed to be done on the new house <laughs> weren't done. Uh, so she got upset with that. So Stephanie, like, I'm sorry Eric didn't get those things done in the house like he was supposed to. Uh, I'm sure now that you're back that it'll all get taken care of, and more importantly, we are glad you were able to ring the bell at the Mayo Clinic. Geis out to Cassius Robertson. Canisius transfer has 17 in his second game here at Rupp Arena. By the way, we were talking about shoes earlier. How about P.J. Washington's kicks? They look like work boots. Did you notice that? He's had a very workmanlike 11 <laughs> points and five rebounds. I think I'd wear those if I were hiking. <laughs> yes, yeah. They're fit for the trail, it looks like. Vanderbilt, yeah. Hedged out by Tillman. Knox had his shot challenged. And Missouri throws it away. And take a look, those are the shoes. I'm not really sure what color they are. Ow. Technicolor. At least his are like intact. <laughs> I mean, Cassius's shoes, they're not even like functional anymore. I'll take, if you offered me those two pairs of shoes and said go play on the court, <laughs> I'll take PJ Washington's all day. 
you think the folks in Oregon are paying attention to our telecast tonight? Right, on Phil's birthday? No uh, question. Pick a shoe. Which one do you want? On the left or the right? I'm going with these. Those are mine. That's what I'm going with. Tom, what do you want? I'm going with these. They're broken in. They're like your favorite baseball glove. No, that's just bad, Tom. You're lying. You don't mean that. Jeremiah Tillman is fouled out. He will take his shoes to the bench. Reed Nico enters. Speaking of working trails, Reed Nico is a fisheries and wildlife major at the University of Missouri. Big fella likes to go on quiet walks in the woods to calm his mind before games. I don't know if that's possible at Rupp Arena here in downtown Lexington. Jared Vanderbilt has been a nice addition to this Kentucky program. Missed the first 17 games of the season with a foot injury. They're able to add depth. Well, add a rebounder. I, I saw Jared Vanderbilt play last year at the Nike Hoop Summit along with a lot, most of this freshman class. And Jared was the one that actually stood out to me the most, Tom. And I, I think he can be, and I think he is, a difference maker on this team. Look at how he's rebounded, in particular, the last four games. He has been a beast on the glass. Uh, because of it, he had zero, by the way, double-digit scoring outputs until two games ago. And now he had back-to-back -back 11 points. If he gets two more points, it'll be his first double-double of the season. Uh, he's really accepted his role. When he first came back, it was, okay, I'm going to prove to everybody what I can do. I'm going to score. I'm going to be aggressive. That's not what he needed to do. He needed to let the game come to him. How does the game come to you? Play defense, rebound, get your opportunities when you can. It was a little bit disruptive when he first returned to this team. It's worked out. He's shooting 60% now over the last three games. We step away for a timeout. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. And in part by Boost Mobile. Well, Missouri has had a tough time in this second half. They've been outscored 34 to 26. This is a Missouri team trying to return to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2013. Kanzo Martin has a squad that's projected to be a seven seed right now. They are six and seven against quadrant one opponents. This would drop them to six and eight. A couple of quadrant three losses, and that's a uh, something the NCAA selection committee will be using. They lost at home to Ole Miss last time out. There was a really bad loss. Ole Miss with an RPI of 104 and a neutral site loss to RPI 176 Illinois. We can walk you through what the quadrants mean and how they'll be measured, but what we really don't know at this point, Sean, is how much weight the selection committee is going to give to them. There's Jared Vanderbilt. And there's a double-double, the first of his career at Kentucky, and what a way to get it. He gave it up, and he sprinted down the lane. He knew he was going to get that ball back. Look, Missouri's a tournament team. And Jared Vanderbilt is a man out on the floor right now. Wow! Nico took a shot to the forehead, sticks with it, and now Jante Porter misses. 14 rebounds for Vanderbilt to go along with the 10 points. Missouri must stop the losing streak, though, at Vandy. And that is a difficult place when you think about the way that court's laid out. It's a tough environment to go win on the road. We go back to Jared Vanderbilt. Watch this, the throw ahead. He knew exactly as he threw it ahead. He got over the top of the defense and able to finish and then watch the reaction able to block the shot and he came back and he got another one just so strong impeccable timing for jared vanderbilt officials have separated the teams there was some john going back and forth and that time reed nico wanted to show the officials his shiner he got popped pretty good 
on that block shot a moment ago. Well, if he got popped, it wasn't because of Jared Vanderbilt. So that might, you know what, they could put some ice on that. It looks like it might actually open up. They did not call a foul on the play that resulted in that swelling and blood. I would say usually if you're going up for a shot and your head ends that. up getting split open, that that's probably an easy one that was missed. The officials have gone to the monitor. I've got to wonder, we don't know this for sure, if they're going to go back and look at that and see if it should have been a flagrant simply because of the blood. There was no foul called on the play. Then afterwards, and a foul on Jordan Geis coming up the other way. Geis got into it a little bit, if I remember correctly, with P.J. Washington. Well, your short-term memory loss is still intact. Good job. You did a nice <laughs> job remembering the names there, Tommy. Uh, hey, Tom, look, if they're looking at this, and we'll, we'll get a cleaner look here. Let's see. No, it happened before this. Yeah, it happened on his It happened shot. on the shot attempt that he had. So hopefully we'll get that for you. But you know Missouri, and you know the proud tradition that it has as a basketball University. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I remember when I was covering the Big 12, and they were in the Big 12. And there were players like Kim English, Flip Pressy, Denman. Those are good players, and Missouri was a top five team nationally. That environment was rocky. Here's what I would say. Expectations this year went sky high with Michael Porter. Then when they found out he was going to not be able to play, it dropped off. But the fans didn't drop out. They were like, okay, well, let's give this team a chance. This team has provided energy and toughness that that community has embraced. There's the contact Vanderbilt going across his forehead. Terry Oglesby lets us know that there's just a basketball play, no flagrant foul on it an incidental contact as the elbow came down. That's so incidental to Reed Nickel now, is it? It's tough to explain <laughs> to him. Yes. They didn't mean to hit you in the head. Sorry, you're bleeding. Nickel's a great story. He's had to overcome a lot in his young life. <laughs> Sophomore from Maple Grove, Minnesota. Got his first scholarship offer from the University of North Dakota. The day after that scholarship offer, his first D1 offer, his father, Russ, passed away. 13 now for Gilgis Alexander. Reed was at his driver's ed class when it happened. The police came and picked him up and took him straight to the hospital. He said, I knew at that point something was serious. He was trying to make his father, Big Russ, proud every day. Brett Rouse on the floor now for Missouri. He doesn't get much playing time. Dante Porter blocked by Kevin Knox. The lob and Van Leer whistled for the foul. And that'll send Vanderbilt to the free throw line. Well, the 15 point win last time out against Arkansas was the largest SEC point differential this season for Kentucky. And they're going to better that tonight against Missouri. Again, a reminder, Arizona and Oregon coming up next. DeAndre Ayton will play. Walton will be on the call. Oh, my, what could happen? Oh, my. He might be in his teepee. And then after that, it'll be Sports Center with John Bucci Gross and Zubin Mahenti. They'll have all the big moments of postgame coverage from Thunder Warriors. Plus, there's history in Lubbock with Kansas clinching at least a share of the Big 12 regular season title for the 14th consecutive year. And they'll break down Tigers' third round at the Honda Classic Sports Center, 12:15 a.m. Eastern, 9:15 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Next for Missouri will be Tuesday night on the road against Vanderbilt. And they get Arkansas coming to Como to close out the regular season next Saturday. Kentucky gets a struggling Ole Miss squad in here on Wednesday night. And then they close their regular season on the road at Florida 
next Saturday. Kevin Perrier to the free throw line. Right now, Auburn, by the way, has come back and has a one-point lead over Florida, 64-63. Remember, if Auburn wins that game, they clinch at least a share of the SEC championship. They could still tie with Tennessee, although they have the head-to-head -head win, so Auburn would get the higher seed in the conference tournament in St. Louis. By the way, I know you're excited about going to St. Louis. That'll be a fun trip. Cats fans are used to headed to Nashville. Back in the day, they would head to Catlanta. You think... Kentucky fans are going to make it to the Show Me State for the tournament? That's a funny question, Tom. <laughs> You're a funny guy. <laughs> That's a good joke. I mean, seriously? What, what, what are we have you call gone? Have you are we going to call it Cat, Cat Lewis? What are, have you ever called a game that Kentucky's fans haven't showed up? No. no. Heck, when they came to Poly Pavilion, it was the first sellout that they've had in a gazillion years. And... Most of it was because Kentucky fans bought the tickets. Right. I expect it to be covered in blue. Scott Trade Center hosting toasted raviolis. Yeah, a little T-Rav for everybody. Is there anything else besides that in St. Louis? Yeah, we'll get some Emo's pizza. What's Emo's pizza? You get some Provel cheese on the top of your pizza if you want it. I'll take you up in the arch. Have you ever been in the arch? No. We're getting a little egg-shaped contraction. We'll go 542 feet in the air. It'll take us four seconds to get up, three seconds to get down. And I will be clinging to the wall the whole time we're up there because it scares the bejesus out of me. Does it stop or does it just go straight No, it stops. You get out, you walk around a little bit. Now, I will tell you that the arch sways with the wind. It can move from 6 to 12 inches. Yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, can I get a tour of Bush Stadium? Sure, we can arrange that. All right, that, I'll be fine with that. I'll take you to Soulard. Great history in that town. What a fantastic sports town. That's a foul. You think? Well, you were questioning whether or not getting hit in the head and bleeding is a foul, so I didn't know where your eyesight is gone. Kevin Knox's family is used to getting knocked around. There's another look at Reed Nicko. I told you his dad played football at Florida State. You know that he was... A great wide receiver for him. He had 10 catches in the first half of their 92 game against Florida. The quarterback was also a pretty good basketball player. That was Charlie Ward. How's that looking? They've stemmed the bleeding. Probably going to leave a mark. Arizona and Oregon coming up next. How does Lorenzo Romar coach that team? I mean, wow. Well, he'll put on a suit and he'll stand up <laughs> instead of sitting down. You know he was a head coach at Washington and at St. Louis and at Pepperdine. He, he, he'll be fine. Michael Porter Jr. originally committed to Washington. His dad was on Lorenzo Romar's staff last year. He hasn't been through anything like this. No, but I would point out that you know, Steve Lavin took over as head coach of UCLA after Jim Herrick was removed. That happened six months after he had taken the job at Pepperdine. If he didn't leave, he probably would have been promoted to the head coaching position there instead of Steve Lavin. So if he goes out there and this turns into a longer, drawn-out process with Sean Miller, and he does a good job with his group, there's nothing on his record as of right now that we know of. It's a heck of a caveat. Jonte Porter fouls out. And John Calipari will empty the bench. Brad Calipari, Johnny David, Dylan Pulliam will all enter. And the Kentucky Stars will get a breather over the last 69 seconds. So who of these guys off the bench will get a shot up in the last 69 seconds for Kentucky? I'm pulling um, for Pulliam. He's a computer engineering major who's busy writing codes and differential equations in his spare time. The smart money's on 12. Well, yeah, because you got to keep mama happy. Well, and the students. 
they'll be happy with either one. Look at Johnny David getting back on defense. Kentucky goes zone. Oh, Barnett got behind him but couldn't convert. Got to be the shoes. 24 for Cassius Robertson. I thought this would be the kind of situation where Michael Porter Jr. could see the floor for Missouri if the Tigers were down big late, but he didn't bother dressing out tonight. We've got 53 seconds to talk you through the end. Kentucky is the youngest team in college basketball. You've probably heard that before, but here's some freshmen first for this young cat squad. They score 80% of their team's points. It's the most ever for a John Calipari team at Kentucky. Top six scores are all freshmen. They've never had an upperclassman score a point yet this season. And for the first time in the Calipari era, a freshman has led the team in scoring in every single game that will continue tonight. But John Calipari will match his 20 fourth consecutive 20 win season they will move to 132 and four at home against unranked teams under John Calipari I told you that was gonna be the first shot it's a good look Well, yeah, because the other two guys get taken out. Who would you pick right now to win the SEC tournament? I'm actually having to think about it. That's that's a good sign. Auburn has had the best season in the SEC, but they're dealing with significant depth issues, especially with the injury to Anthony McLemore. Right. Tennessee at has at times looked as strong and as physical. They came in here, they won. They beat Kentucky at home and on the road this year. They got the sweep. Brad Calipari, got it! There's the icing looking at his cake. wife. Look at him looking at his wife. <laughs> she was at practice yesterday. I'll go with Kentucky. That's what I was aiming for. Yeah, I'll go with Kentucky. If I, they I think play they, like this, they're going to win the tournament if they can play like this. An 88-point effort for Kentucky. The Cats now 20-9. and nine. Once again, our final, Kentucky.